Scouting Report, Prediction. Its rivalry week in number 7 Michigan, 4-0-1-0 Big Ten, will host Michigan State, 3-1-1-0, on Saturday, 7.30 p.m., ABC, in the first night game of the series. Michigan State rebounded from a loss to Notre Dame with a 17-10 win against Iowa last week, while Michigan is coming off a bye after a 28-10 victory at Purdue. Saturday's game will be the 110th between the two teams, with Michigan owning a 69-35-5 edge in the all-time series. The Wolverines snapped a three-game losing streak to the Spartans with a 32-23 win in East Lansing last year. Here's a scouting report by position, key matchup to watch and prediction for the game for Michigan beat writer Aaron McMahon and Michigan State beat writer Matt Wenzel, college football, Michigan State vs. Iowa, September 30, 2017. Michigan State quarterback Brian Lewark, 14, throws a pass, while warming up before their Big Ten football game against Iowa at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, on Saturday, September 30, 2017. Mike Mulholland Live.com, quarterback. Matt, Michigan State's Brian Lewark took a step forward last week with his decision-making in a two-touchdown, turnover-free performance against Iowa. He has completed 63.2% of his passes, 84 for 133, for eight touchdowns and two interceptions, and leads the Spartans in rushing at 62.0 yards per game with two scores on the ground. Michigan's Wilton Spade is out with an injury and John O'Corn will make just his second start for the Wolverines. He had a solid performance in relief against Purdue by finishing 18 for 26 passing for 270 yards, one touchdown and one interception, and could spark Michigan's offense. Lewark is just a redshirt sophomore with six career starts, but has taken every meaningful snap for the Spartans this season, while O'Corn is a fifth-year senior, but attempted all of one pass this season, before filling in at Purdue. Edge, Michigan State. Aaron, Michigan hands its keys to the offensive fifth-year senior John O'Corn, who showed up and helped guide the Wolverines to a second-half victory September 23 at Purdue. He has the arm strength and ability to move in the pocket to help open some things up, but he doesn't have the big game experience Wilton Spate had. Meanwhile, Brian Lewick continues to impress those on the outside. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh praised the third-year Sofoam more this week for his arm strength and dual threat ability, which remains the greatest challenge for this Michigan defense. Edge, Michigan State. College football, Michigan vs. Air Force, September 16, 2017. Michigan running back Ty Isaac, 32, dives against Air Force at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor on Saturday, September 16, 2017. Mike Mulholland Live.com. Running backs. Matt, with three returning veterans, the backfield was supposed to be a strength this season for Michigan State, but, so far, has been a disappointment. L.J. Scott, Gerald Holmes and Madre London have combined to average just 3.7 yards per carry, 113 rushes for 415 yards, and have two touchdowns total on the ground. There are offensive line concerns as well, but the fact Lewark still leads the team in rushing four games into the season is not a positive for the Spartans. Ty Isaac has been Michigan's top running back and is averaging 6.2 yards per carry and 89.0 per game, 57 rushes for 356 yards and one touchdown, while Chris Evans and Karen Higdon have combined for 80 carries for 356 yards and four scores. Edge, Michigan. Aaron, while O'Corn's emergence in the second half against Purdue allowed Michigan fans to breath a sigh of relief, so did Chris Evans in the run game. Evans had quiet games against the Air Force in Cincinnati, but his 22-carry, 78-yard game against the Boilermakers gave the Michigan coaches confidence to use him again. Michigan is at its best when it has three strong ball carriers, and they do right now in Evans, a sophomore, fifth-year senior Ty Isaac and junior Karen Higdon. Michigan State will be tasked with trying to jumpstart its four backs, only one of whom, L.J. Scott, is averaging more than 50 yards per game. 
and that might be difficult against this Michigan defensive line. Edge, Michigan. College Football, Michigan State vs. Iowa, September 30, 2017. Michigan State wide receiver Felton Davis 3, 18, catches a touchdown pass in the first quarter of their Big Ten football game against Iowa at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing on Saturday, September 30, 2017. Mike Mulholland Live.com Receivers tight ends, Matt, Michigan State's Felton Davis had a career-best performance with nine receptions for 114 yards and two touchdowns against Iowa and leads the team with 21 catches for 256 yards and four scores. However, he's far from Lewark's only target as the Spartans have a number of young playmakers, including Daryl Stewart Jr., Tristan Jackson and Hunter Risen, to go with tight end Matt Sokol. Michigan is still reworking its receiver core after losing its top two wideouts, Amara Darbo and Jehu Chesson, an All-American tight end jaked by to graduation. The Wolverines' depth also took a hit when true freshman Tarek Black suffered a broken foot in the third game. Grant Perry has been the top target and leads the team with 13 catches for 163 yards and one touchdown, while Sean McKeon and Zach Gentry 16 catches, 239 yards, one touchdown combined, are emerging options at tight end. Edge, Michigan State. Aaron, getting open has been a problem for Michigan's receiving core this season, and it didn't help losing Tarek Black after the Air Force game. Grant Perry remains the only active wide receiver with more than seven catches and 100 yards receiving, with Michigan quarterbacks instead relying heavily on the tight ends. Sean McKeon has 10 catches for 120 yards, while Zach Gentry has 6 catches for 119 yards. Michigan State likes going to Felton Davis, evident by his 21 catches for 256 yards and 4 touchdowns, but has 3 other pass-catching options. Secondary target Errol Stewart has more catches, 17, and yards, 170, than any of Michigan's pass-catching targets, while Tristan Jackson and tight end Matt Sokol remain big play capable. Edge, Michigan State. All.jpg, Michigan offensive lineman Mason Cole, 52, watches the big screen, while on the bench in the second half against Hawaii at Michigan Stadium on Saturday, September 3, 2016. Melanie Maxwell, the Ann Arbor News, offensive line. Matt, Mark D'Antonio called Michigan State's rushing problems all-inclusive, and the line shares part of the blame. With the exception of senior center Brian Allen, it's still a young and inexperienced group that got even younger last week, when right guard David Beadle didn't dress due to an apparent injury, and true freshman Kevin Jarvis made his first career start. D'Antonio said Beatles' absence won't be long-term, and he's listed as the starter on the depth chart, but it's unclear if he'll be available on Saturday. The Spartans are averaging 187.5 yards per game rushing and have allowed six sacks, which ties for third in the Big Ten. Michigan also has a reworked defensive line anchored around the senior in left tackle Mason Cole, who moved from center last year. The Wolverines are averaging 184.3 yards per game on the ground and have allowed 12 sacks, which is tied for 11th in the Big Ten. Edge, even. Aaron, Michigan has had trouble here all season, ranking near the bottom of the football bowl subdivision in sacks allowed, 3.0, and tackles for loss allowed, 8.0. Instability on the right side of the line has played into that with right guard now a rotation between Michael Onwenu and John Runyon Jr., and a first-year starter at right tackle in Nolan Ulysio. Michigan State hasn't exactly been good here either, allowing 1.5 sacks and 6.0 tackles for loss per game, and that's with a mobile quarterback like Lewark. On its face, MSU probably gets the edge here. But Michigan's number one ranked defensive line has the ability to exploit inexperience. Edge, even.